good evening friends welcome you all to this 13th day of the uh, online classes for ma english part 2 third semester of the syllabus prescribed by rashtra sant tukroji maharaj nagpur university nagpur the topic for the session are the poems prescribed by william uh, uh, prescribed of uh, william wordsworth and s t coleridge and uh, the resource person is dr uh, urmila dabir madam uh, as far as uh, it comes to the english fraternity or the university circles ma'am doesn't need, need any kind of introduction but yet uh, the formality has to be done and i take this opportunity to introduce ma'am to the participants present here Uh, ma'am has uh, a teaching experience uh, of over 30 years and uh, she is working uh, on the post of principal since last 13 years uh, she has uh, 10 students have been awarded phd under her and uh, madam is a recipient of uh, uh, krishna kumar gold medal for the best principal of uh, the university in the year 2019 other than that she has received educational excellence award by indo thai forum in 2011 she has attended uh, world forum uh, meet on social development at geneva and is the first female to be conferred with best program officer at present mam is working uh, mam is uh, uh, on the important uh, uh, committees of the university she is a senator management council member standing committee she is in the in the member of standing committee she is member of dsc since 2010 and more than 12 papers have been published under her uh, mams college rajkumar kevel ramani kanya mahavidyalaya jari patka nagpur is one of the organizers of this online classes along with vasantrao naik government institute institute of arts and social sciences nagpur and jm patel arts commerce and science college bhandara so i welcome ma'am on behalf of the organizers and the participants and hand over the mic to her for presentation over to you ma'am thank you dr kapil <clears throat> during the pandemic these e classes have been very useful and helpful to all the students when we could not meet personally and uh, when we experimented it in the beginning we had a lot of doubts whether we would be able to reach our students or not but then it was very successful initially it was started for ug students and then we also uh, made it or introduced it to uh, the post graduate students during this pandemic we have tried to give as much material and explanation of all those things which are there as content in the syllabus to the students today i have been assigned two poets william wordsworth and coleridge william wordsworth tintern abbey and s t coleridge's christabel and kubla khan i'll start with christabel christabel is a very interesting poetry written by s t coleridge coleridge belongs to the romantic age and Wordsworth and Coleridge jointly brought out the lyrical ballads. Now there are some special uh, features of Coleridge's poetry which need to be introduced before we start with the poetry. You see supernatural element in the poetry of Coleridge. There is an atmosphere which is highly supernatural. Something suspense is going on, and there is an atmosphere of dream also when you read Kubla Khan. you feel that it is a dream like situation there is a lot of mystery in the poetry of coleridge if you read ancient mariner you see a lot of mystery even christabel then there is a lot of imagination we can say vigorous imagination in the poetry of coleridge and all these mysteries which are there they are very perplexing as i've already said that there is a dream like quality also then there is a touch of medievalism in the poetry of coleridge as the poets of romantic age you see coleridge's love for nature he has 
described nature with loving devotion, which we find in Wordsworth's poetry also. And there is an element of humanitarianism in the poetry of Coleridge. And uh, you can also see some reflexes of the French Revolution. Coleridge is known for his narrative skill. You can say that he's a superb uh, storytelling poet. When we read his poetry, we feel that something that is uh, being told by Coleridge passes through our eyes. It is actually a picture before our eyes. So when I uh, start with Christabel, whatever I'm explaining you, try to bring that picture before your eyes and you will be able to see something, some picture coming before your eyes. And this was the uh, element or this was, you can say, the quality of Coleridge. He was, uh, he had an art of uh, storytelling and the art was to create suspense evoke interest in the narrative. So, uh, he has produced a uh, very beautiful or dramatic effect in all the poetries. Now, when we start with uh, Christabel, I would like to tell you that uh, only one part has been pre prescribed for your uh, syllabus, but you can, out of curiosity, read the second part also. Now, Christabel is a poetry where the storyline goes like this. You have a rich baron, a rich baron who lives in a castle because a baron lives in a castle. His name is Sir Eoline. Now, the element of mystery uh, starts, suspense starts from the first line only. Now, there was something, uh, some uh, element of suspense is created in the beginning of the poetry, like see, this rich baron had an old, toothless, mastiff bitch. And this bitch was in the habit of uttering short and not very loud howls to answer the castle clock. So whenever the, whenever the castle clock used to st uh, strike a sound, this mastiff bitch used to answer. And imagine a night where you can hear the castle clock giving its stroke. And what this mastiff used, bitch used to do, she used to howl once when the clock used to struck a quarter and 12 times when it used to struck an hour. So as if she knew that what, what time it was. And again, I am uh, repeating this thing that there is an element of suspense again. Now, this howling sound of the mastiff bitch is associated with the fact or with the belief that this mastiff bitch could see Christabel's dead mother wrapped in a coffin when she died. So there was a ghost of Christabel's mother, as it was said. Now imagine this background, and then you can see that the night that is being described is a very cold midnight. The moon was full, but it was hiding behind a cloud. And Sir Leoline's lovely daughter, whose name was Christabel, she went into the forest to pray for the welfare of her lover, the knight with whom she was engaged. And she had been dreaming of this night, uh, the previous night. Night, K-N-I-G-H-T and N-I-G-H-T. Now one can imagine that why did Christabel go to the forest to pray for her beloved with whom she has been engaged? But again, this is how Chris, uh, Coleridge describes. Then all of a sudden, when she was in the forest, she heard a moaning sound behind the oak tree. Now, she did not know from where the sound has come. She thought perhaps it was the sound made by the wind. But there was no wind at all. Because even her curl did not move. So there was no wind at all. Her heart started beating fast. and stealthily she looked at the other side of the tree what did she see try to imagine these things before your eyes as i told you that coleridge is a storyteller see how he is knitting his story what did she see over there she saw a young lady dressed in beautiful clothes she was very fair 
her white was white and her arms were bare now why this is an uh, expression made that her arms were bare it was cold night and at that time ladies from uh, royal families they never had bare hands they used to wear gloves so she had bare arms what did she have in her hair there was a glittering uh, gems which decorated the hair of this beautiful lady christabel was surprised to see this beautiful lady and out of curiosity she asked her who she was why she was there now this beautiful lady replied that her name was geraldin and her father was a noble man she came from a noble family and why did she arrive in the forest was because she was kidnapped abducted by five warriors the previous day and she was abducted on a horse and she was riding and they left her in the forest again this is a mystery that why did they leave leave her in the forest and those five warriors who had abducted her said that they would come back soon now she requested christabel that she needs her help and she wants to go away from that place christabel was a very gentle lady very compassionate very loving and she promised geraldin that she would give all the help that she required she said that her father sir leonine was a noble man and uh, he was a baron they lived in a castle there so her father would make all the arrangements to make her go to her father's house safely christabel requested geraldin to come with her to the castle they walked very fast and uh, christabel told the lady that her father was not keeping well he did not have good health those days so it was midnight so they should not disturb his sleep and she also requested her uh, the lady to share her bed that night so that nobody could be disturbed in the house because it was past midnight i hope you are enjoying this description made by colridge now these two ladies they came to the castle gate stealthily slowly now when they came to the gate they crossed they tried to cross the gate geraldin collapsed and it appeared that she was in pain now colridge gives you different hints that geraldin is not a normal human being she has come to the house of a noble man a pious man christabel is a pious lady a very compassionate and loving lady so she cannot cross the threshold of those people who are very pious or those people who are very good human beings this is the sign that colridge gives that she is not a normal human being uh christabel helped her and they crossed the court the mastiff bitch gave angry howl because she saw something super uh, unnatural in geraldin christabel was really surprised at this because uh, the bitch never howled when christabel came because she was familiar with christabel one more strange thing happened when they crossed the hall there was a fireplace and the fire was burning very low but when they passed through that when geraldin passed through that it burnt into or it leapt into a flame they held their breath as they passed sir leoline's room so that he might he might not be disturbed and finally they reach christabel's room now there is a beautiful description of medieval art by colridge i told you that he describes all these things and he has a love for all those artistic things very beautifully he has described the room of geraldine you'll be remember uh, you'll remember rape of the lock in which belinda's room was beautifully described by the poet now when they reach the room of christabel what do they see they see that 
it has been decorated with carved uh, figures of angels there is a silver lamp and this silver lamp a uh, lamp was hung from the feet of an angel's figure with a silver chain see such minute descriptions have been made by the poet cristobal trimmed the lamp and it brightened because you have to trim that uh, which is there so that it can burn very uh, brightly giraldin again collapsed on the floor when she came into cristobal stone because cristobal was a pious soul cristobal offered her the wine which was made by her mother and she told giraldin that her mother had died when she was born so at the time of her birth her mother uh, had passed away giraldin was not normal she looked disturbed when cristobal made a mention of her mother and in a strange voice she started she saw something which was there you know some figure some spirit which was there and she started challenging the spirit of cristobal's dead mother and the spirit told to uh, her to go away because that was the hour which belonged to giraldin cristobal did not understand what is going on because she could not see anything but giraldin saw the figures the figure of the dead mother of cristobal who was the guardian angel of cristobal who was guarding cristobal because she was her mother now cristobal did not understand all these things she only thought that giraldin was too tired because of the experience that she had which was very disturbing and because of that experience she may be uh, seeing some hallucination or she must be undergoing some horrible experience so she had all sympathy for her she offered her more wine after some time giraldin recovered and she stood upright as i told you that she was very beautiful and she looked very beautiful in that light of the lamp which was there she thanked cristobal because cristobal had shown her the kindness and cristobal had brought her to her place gave all safety that she could get now gerald uh, cristobal asked her that both of them would go to sleep take rest and uh, she said that she would pray before reti uh, retiring before going to sleep but cristobal uh, uh, whatever she said geraldin could not follow those things uh, cristobal stood uh, was uh, by the side of geraldin and uh, she felt that there was some spell in cristobal something unnatural was there and she could see something which was beyond the description of cristobal that night cristobal had horrible dreams and those dreams which were there she saw with open eyes and this girl who was there geraldin whom she had brought home who was kneeling under the oak tree to pray geraldin slept peacefully by her side things changed in the morning because that was the hour of the angels the hour of the spirit of geraldin had passed away and she had seen something which was horrible which was a sight which she could not describe which made her think that geraldin was not a normal human being she was a spirit uh, geraldin was sleeping peacefully by her side cristobal got up she relaxed her face became soft and sad tears were flowing down her eyes but still she smiled perhaps she understood that the dead spirit of her mother who <coughs> who is called as the guardian spirit was guarding her she also believed that if if people prayed to saints to gods they never refused 
they are by your side and they will always help you to come out of these difficulties so i hope you have understood this particular poetry i have only summarized it actually the beauty lies in explaining you line by line but the time does not permit us so i tried to give you the summary of this particular poetry i'll just take a uh, one minute break and then we can Now we will take up Kubla Khan. This is a small poem, so I can explain you line by line. now this kubla khan poetry is a uh, as i had told you that uh, coleridge has a quality of giving you dream so kubla khan is also a poetry which makes you dream again strange sights are there again you have an element of suspense you have the description of medieval times now kubla khan uh, was a grandson of the great uh, genius khan who was the founder of mongolian empire and he ruled between uh, 1257 to 1294 he was a great conqueror and uh, zandu uh, was a summer capital of kubla khan and with this particular background we will start this particular poetry now in zandu did kubla khan a stately pleasure dome decree where alf the sacred river ran to cravens measureless to man down to a sunless sea so twice five miles of fertile ground with walls and towers were girdled round and there were gardens bright and senious rills where blossomed penny and incense bearing tree and here where forest ancient as hills enfolding sunny spots of greenery now kubla khan he had ordered a magnificent a beautiful pleasure palace to be built for him in zandu now this particular palace which was there it was situated on the bank of a sacred river called alf and this river was flowing through a number of immeasurably deep caves and ultimately it sank into a dark sea now this land which was there it was fertile land when 10 square miles in area and this particular land was enclosed with walls and towers this magnificent place has had bright gardens winding streams aromatic trees and these trees had sweet smelling flowers see the beauty of the description as we have already noticed in christabel that he has the craft and art of telling a story so exactly this particular palace comes before our eyes so these streams and aromatic trees which were there they had sweet smelling flowers the whole atmosphere was full of fragrance of these beautiful uh, flowers there was also forest now this forest was as ancient as the hills so it was as old as the hills very old forest very dense forest 
and there was some sunny spots spaces full of greenery because it was a dense forest so there were no uh, directly the sun did not reach but there there were some sunny spots and this whole area was completely green there was greenery everywhere but oh that deep romantic chasm which slanted down the green hill a throat a sudden cover a savage place as holy and enchanted as ever beneath a waning moon was haunted by woman wailing for her demon lover now the most remarkable thing of this place was it was deep mysterious there was a slope of a green hill there were cedar trees there was wild and all aspiring holy and haunted by a woman it was said that this woman used to be there who was wandering in search of a demon lover who used to meet her in the dim light of the waning moon and then he used to desert her this woman was unable to forget him but fully realizing that he was a demon it haunted this wild place to look for him see the atmosphere of suspense dream all these things has been created by the poet and from this chasm with ceaseless turmoil seething as if this earth in fast thick pants were breathing a mighty fountain momently was forced amid whose uh, swift half intermediate burst huge fragments vaulted like rebounding hail or chaffy grain beneath the thresher's fail and amid these dancing rocks at once and ever it flung up momently the sacred river five miles meandering with a mazy motion now over there you could hear the wailing sound of the woman who was uh, waiting for her demon lover who was in search of that demon lover who had deserted her and you could also see over here spring of water which was gushing from a gourd at intervals and when the water used to gush out it used to make a roaring sound and it imitated a huge mass of water and it looked as if it was gasping for breath as if this earth was gasping whenever you are breathless you gasp for breath so this gushing of water is compared to the gasping <coughs> of heavily gasping earth we can say that and the outburst of this water uh, threw up a huge fragments of rocks which fell on the earth if the water continuously flows over the rock it becomes uh, you can say soft and then it breaks and then they are thrown with the uh, gushing of the water or with the speed of the water and how did it come to the earth see whenever thresher who is there he throws the grain from up you know Uh, so that the grain and the dust is separated so it appeared as if a thresher which was there he was threshing the grain so the rocks were being thrown in that particular manner where the farmer was trying to separate the grain from the chaff through wood and dale the sacred river ran then reached the caverns measureless to man and sank in the tumult of a lifeless ocean and miss this tumult ubla heard from far and sister voices prophesizing war the shadow of the doom of pleasure floated midway on the waves where was heard mingled measure from the fountain and the caves it was a miracle of rare device a sunny pleasure doom with caves of ice now this sacred river alf which followed a 5 mile long winding course through woods and valleys a river does not go straight there are winding and uh, these wave, waves that they create and they go in that particular winding manner so this river 
it took a winding course of 5 miles through woods valleys and then it entered into the deep caves and finally sank in the uh, in the sea and it is calling it as dead sea without producing loud noise why dead sea because the sea is over there only it doesn't move forward while the river moves it makes its passage and it moves forward that is why it is called a dead sea and amidst that noise of the tumultuous noises of the waters what do you hear you hear the noise of kubla khan and his ancestors who are prophesizing future wars that war would take place in future so you could hear the voices of the ancestors of kubla khan this pleasure palace was built midway between the spring and the caves which was measureless to man and from the palace we could hear the mixed sound of the water gushing from the spring and the water noisily flowing through the caves so this mixed sound could be heard now one could say that this was a piece of architecture and it was an amazing architectural skill which was used because it had sunny domes over the caves there were sunny domes but inside there were the icy underground caves so therefore one could say that it was a piece of architecture a rare piece of architecture which you could see in kubla khan's palace a damsel with a dulcimer in a vision once i saw was an abyssinian maid and on her dulcimer she played singing of mount abura could i revive within me her symphony and song to such a deep delight it would win me that with music loud and long i could build that doom in the air that sunny doom those caves of fire baba udala to fire baba kapil 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 ha madam mute yourself kapil don't mind ha mute kar kapil ha madam i would build that doom in the air the sunny doom those caves of ice and all who heard should see them there and all should cry beware beware his flashing eyes is floating hair we were circle round him thrice and close your eyes with holy dread for he on honey dew hath fed and drank the milk of paradise so once he saw a strange vision what did the poet see he saw an abyssinian maid playing on a dulcimer dulcimer is a musical instrument and she was singing a song about mount abura from where she had come and she was missing that place so she was singing that song the poet says that as if he could recapture that melody sweet melody of the abyssinian maid which filled him with divine inspiration that he would write poetry to give the vivid description of kubla khan's pleasure palace and all those who heard would be able to see that palace in the air in their imagination as we can see when we uh, hear or when we read the description of kubla khan's palace they would say that this particular poet is a magician and they would see him with an appearance like he has floating hair flashing eyes which were full of awe that is fear and to save themselves from the spirit which was there the poet who was something different they would go round him thrice to protect themselves from the magical powers that the poet had so he had the magic to create a palace in the air of kubla khan and the frenzy the poetic frenzy that he had what did the people think that he was a superhuman being and superhuman being do not feed on the common food but they feed on the honey dew and the milk of the paradise and all these people would tell that keep themselves away from him because he has supernatural powers i hope you could understand this particular poetry of kubla khan
कपिल हा मॅडम वर्सवत घ्यायची आहे का जर वेळ असेल तर घेऊन टाका we all know that wordsworth is a poet of nature and he has worshiped nature like god now this particular poetry tintan abbey this is composed when he visit the banks of river wye after a gap of 5 years and he visits this particular uh, river wye with his sister dorothy and after visiting this particular river why tintan abbey after 5 years of lapse what does he see is there any difference between the poet or the nature has he matured as a person or what is the difference that he has noticed in the atmosphere that is there in the things that are surrounding the poet over there so let us uh, summarize this particular poetry the poet has visited this particular river why after a gap of 5 years and when he goes there he hears the murmuring sound of why he can see the steep and lofty cliffs he can see the plots of uh, cottage ground the orchard and there are some unripe fruits in the orchard the hedge grows the pastoral farms farms and he can see the smoke rising from the trees with a distant glimpse of the gypsy tents which are there uh, or some hermits caves are there so when the gypsy tents are there from there he can see the smoke rising so this is the scenery which is extremely beautiful which had fascinated him 5 years ago and now after he has come back <coughs> after 5 years from the hustle and bustle of the urban life looking at the beauty of nature he is fascinated and he wants to know that the long absence that he had with nature because he was away from nature he was away from the natural beauty of nature he was in the midst of the urban life so whether that memory of these beautiful forms of nature has blotted it or he does not remember it no it was not like that once again looking at the beautiful shapes of nature he feels that nature comforts him it gives him solace it gives him happiness and he feels that his life which was there in towns and cities was an exile the murmuring sound of the river the beautiful flowers that are blossoming over there all these beautiful sights he feels that it was an exile for him one was just come get he was far away from these beauties of nature but these things which he had enjoyed they have made him a different person he has developed compassion sympathy love and they also had a profound spiritual impact on him spiritually also he has been affected by these beautiful sights in a uh, positive way we can say so all these things which are there the exalted mood that he has the happiness that he gets from the sights of beauty he feels that it is only because he is in the midst of nature now these moments which are there they are beyond earthly things which we cannot even experience or express these moments 
they are full of joy and harmony and it gives an insight into different things of your life the poet says that whenever he is there in the midst of such uh, you can such a thought that everything is meaning meaningless this is a business type of thing the world is only a type of uh, give and take at that particular time when he turns to the, to the ever sustaining memory of the wooded landscape of river why it gives him comfort so whenever he is in the midst of nature whenever he is in the midst of beauty of nature it gives him courage comfort solace so that he can face different challenges of his life once again he is standing on the bank of river why all these memories they come back to his mind and he looks forward to many pleasant thoughts which came to his mind when he saw the landscape of river why he contrasts his feelings that he had in the past and he has in present now he says that when you are a child and when you are in the company of nature it is only full of delight happiness and it is something which is very very innocent you do not know anything about the uh, world that is different from the uh, you can say pleasures of childhood so when you are a uh, a child these pleasures are only delight in outdoor life in boyhood he enjoyed nature and he enjoyed nature only through his senses what are those senses that he has enjoyed he enjoyed nature through the cataract that was sounding cataract which haunted him like a passion and his hungry soul fed itself on the beautiful colors and forms of nature from the mountains and the woods but still his love for nature was untouched by the intellectual interests or association he had advanced in age gradually and he began to look upon nature with a new light after his familiarity with the sufferings of mankind and these sufferings which he discovered he could get solace in the lap of nature and he discovered that in nature there is an existing existence of a living spirit and all these living spirits you can see in different things which is manifested from nature like the setting sun the rounded ocean the living air the blue sky all these objects of nature appeal to your senses and the poet says that he is very happy to find that all the purest thoughts that he has in mind which he has developed they are actually stimulated by nature and they come to him through the avenues of his sense organs and nature is very loving it soothes you it gives you comfort it loves you and whenever you are in sorrow it gives you courage how like a nurse like a guide and like a guardian of your heart and all these things the poet has discovered with the advance in his age so he describes nature how you actually appeal to nature when you are a child when you are a boy and when you become and um become a mature adult so looking at nature is different in all the stages of mankind but at every stage nature soothes you nature gives you comfort nature loves you it makes you compassionate it makes you sympathetic and it stirs your soul it gives you happiness so he says that it is quite possible that if he had not learned lessons from nature he would have not experienced the warm feelings he would have lost that liveliness now he is in company of his dear sister dorothy on the banks of this beautiful 
river why and in the eyes of dorothy you can see the pleasure that she is also enjoying and he had enjoyed 5 years ago so the pleasure and happiness that he derived on the banks of why 5 years ago is the same nature has not changed the poet has undergone a change so nature remains the same it gives you pleasure always the lesson that he had learned from nature says that nature never betrays the heart that loves her man betrays but nature will never betray you and if you give joy to nature you will derive joy from nature so whatever you experience see if you are happy you see happiness in nature if you are sad you see sadness in nature so whatever you give nature gives you back and our minds are full of beauties of nature so uh, this particular uh, nature that leads from joy to joy and it fills our mind with quietness and beauty so that all the evil tongues the unsympathetic jud- judgment of selfish man they will not disturb your cheerful faith so whoever speaks ill about you whoever has an evil tongue about you if you are in the midst of nature you will not experience this particular you can say evil things in your life and you will always stay cheerful and uh, you can always be hopeful of having or you will be always optimistic in the midst of nature so what does the poet say to his sister that she should go on enjoying the beauties of nature in future if she is sad lonely she experiences fear or pain what she can do she can look back on these moments that she had spent in the company of nature on the banks of river why so that she will find company in the impressions of nature that was stored in her mind long back and in time it should be that it may happen that she will be separated from her even at that time she should remember those moments on the banks of river why that she had revisited how not as a normal human being but a devoted worshipper of nature and that the company of his sister had enhanced the beauty of nature in his eyes so it is indeed a very very spiritual poetry by wordsworth and uh, i would have loved to actually explain you but i said that there are constraints of time so we could not do it but i hope you enjoyed all the three poetries and all these three poets belong to the romantic age who had a power to grip you to give you or uh, to make you understand nature and coleridge as i said is a crafted storyteller so i hope you have enjoyed all these poetries all the best thank you very much kapil kapil ha ma'am ha so uh, thank you ma'am ma'am i hope i i could do justice yeah you have you have that <laughs> Uh, for students to uh, attempt the MCQ pattern uh, questions and uh, ma'am yes. summarize the three poems uh, of Coleridge and William Wordsworth uh, on behalf of uh, the organizing colleges and the participating students. Uh, I am thankful to ma'am. I thank ma'am for being here this evening and sparing time for us. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, and all the best to all the students for their examination. Thank you.